The topic of this segment is the open file. As you can see in the position on the board, black is dominating the C file with the rook and queen. But how to really make progress and uh, take advantage of, of this uh, situation? Well, again, as in every position, first you need to simply evaluate what's going on. Is there any material advantage on either side? Not in this case. It's simply we have equal number of pawns, six pawns on each side with queen, rook, two bishops each. As I said, there is only one advantage that black has, and that is the open C file, and potentially another one that black has two pawns against one, which could become a distant outside passed pawn. So let's see how black should continue. Black should try to get a rook to the second rank. Bishop takes, queen takes, and queen c2. So in this particular case, black is forcing the game to head to an endgame. So white has no choice but to exchange the queens as the bishop is as well hanging on b2. So, for example, playing rook e2 wouldn't make any difference, wouldn't make things better for white, even worse, actually, after take, take. And rook c2 pretty much trapped the bishop. So here white in the game traded, but that was inviting the black rook to come in. So mission accomplished. Rook got to the second rank, attacking the bishop. If the bishop moves, the pawn on a2 will fall. That's why white's next move is forced. Rook b1. So this is something what we call black having a very active rook, while white has a passive rook. In general, in chess, it's a good thing when you are dictating the pace, you are dominating the position, you are more active than your opponent. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. So the next task for black is, and that's the biggest difference between the end game and other phases of a chess game, that the king can and should be utilized to improve the position. And that's what black is exactly preparing with his next move. Bishop to e7, came now king to f1. Both sides are trying to activate their kings. King f8. And now I guess white didn't want to move the king immediately because a check would come on b4 and then the king would need to go right back hanging onto the pawn on f2. Therefore white played a3 first controlling the b4 square, then came king e8. And at this stage, uh, the other idea of the a3 move was that now the bishop can also try to move without losing the pawn on a2. And black simply continued bringing the king closer and closer. The unfortunate part for white is that even if the king would come to e1, then it could not go to d1 attacking the rook without losing the pawn on f2. And that's exactly what white is trying to prepare, to try to move the bishop to e3 protecting the pawn, but in order to do that, first the pawn on a3 had to be protected by the rook. And now black finally advanced the pawn, now that the white rook left the b5. Ultimately, black's goal is, as we said, bring the king closer to a, making progress, but to eventually create a passed pawn right here, the two against one, and uh, basically force white to give up either the rook or the bishop for that passed pawn. Came bishop e3 and a5. Black plays very thematically. King e1, and now came a4. Rook b1, and king c6, protecting the pawn. King d1, finally the king could move because the bishop on e3 protects the pawn. 
but as we can see now the a3 pawn will be lost black could play rook c3 that does the job or as rook a2 as black played in the actual game rook c1 king d5 rook c7 and now bishop a3 black now has two connected pass pawns running down so black does not mind really giving up the pawn on f7 because the black pawns are already pass nothing in their way so they are much quicker than potentially white pawns probably here simplest was just to push the pawn although what black played is just as good as well king e4 trying to come to d3 and then checkmate with the rook came bishop d2 and now b4 the game lasted a few more moves, but it really had no importance. It's clear that the black pawns are running down. And in addition, after king d3, the rook a1 checkmate is unstoppable. Well, pretty nice example of how to utilize the advantage of controlling an open file. Typically, your next goal after that is try to get a rook, or in some cases, multiple rooks, uh, on the second rank and in this case black also had a pawn majority on the queen side which allowed to create a passed pawn and that caused white's problems.